You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Accenture. A better you starts with better hydration. Accenture is on a mission to inspire people to do what matters most. Their proprietary ionization process transforms water from any source into ionized alkaline water, providing water that's 99.9% pure with a pH of 9.5 or higher. Essentia Overachieving H2O, the number one ionized alkaline water. Shop now. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night, ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end... What will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. Uh, I will not be hosting today, but my name is Matt, uh, joined in the studio. Hi, Matt. Hey, thanks guys. <laughs> joined in the studio <laughs> as always was Ken interrupting my intro and Neil and Jeff. How are you guys doing today? I'm trying to sit here quietly and not interrupt you. Sorry. Mm. I'm sorry guys. Jump the gun. Jump. I'll go sit in the corner. Well, he asked for decaf and I don't know if uh, Neil actually got him the decaf. Did you do the old switcheroo? Well, back when I was at Someone was being really no, mean and called can't us say names. That. Well, back at the coffee conglomerate, <laughs> when people were being very mean. A different mean, one than Matt works at. I would sometimes give them decaf. Never the other way around, because some people have heart conditions and yeah. whatnot. But sometimes they're being very, very extra and mean. Give them a little decaf. They can just deal there with it. There was this man who said that he had a special stick that would tell him if it was decaf or not. So he would always test it at the window to make sure that we didn't give him decaf. You know what Christian He's Bale says to that guy, Ken? Good for you. <laughs> yes. Good for him. So uh, all the uh, decaf antics uh, notwithstanding, we have uh, two very special guests today. Our first guest is going to be hosting the game. You might remember her from the Bloodsport Tournament, uh, which we may have some announcements about that coming soon uh, for another season. But uh, we're very happy to welcome her back. She's a savage superstar on Patreon, which we very much appreciate. And that is Jody Steele. How are you, Jody? I'm good, guys. How are you all doing? Doing well. Uh, tell us uh, what you've been up to. And for those that may not remember you on Bloodsport, uh, what you're up to. Uh, well, you probably don't remember me because I was eliminated first, so I uh, didn't stick around very long. Listen, um, someone has to be first. It's okay. And you made so, a big impression. Someone has to be it. <laughs> uh, so still live in Rhode Island, um, still work for a giant ISP corporation that I won't name. Um, it's been a pandemic, so I haven't been up to too much, just trying to not catch COVID and stay inside and stay safe, hopefully like you guys too. <laughs> we're trying. We're trying. That's where we're just kind of holed up in the studio with uh, no air. That's true. <laughs> it is very hot in here, but uh, we're so happy to have you back, and, and you wrote today's game. Uh, before we get to it, is there any uh, surprises, or is it going to be pretty straightforward? Are we are we in for something real hard here? Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. I don't think it's super difficult, but, um, you know, there's definitely some stumpers in here, but I think it's going to be a good game. Uh, I tried to be as well-rounded as possible. I even threw some sports questions in there for you guys. Oh, so. man. No. Oh, well, that's all right, Matt. You can still answer them for fun. <laughs> Well, thank, Sorry. <laughs> thank you for writing questions. Uh, we we heard a bunch of your questions on uh, Throwback Trivia Takedown, and you did such a wonderful job, and we had to make sure we got you on right away. So thank you. Oh, I appreciate you guys um, asking. It was a great email to get. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a very special guest with us today. We've been so excited to have her on. Um, she wrote just a wonderful article um, that we had the privilege of being involved in. If you remember, we did a special stream with our friends at Quiz Quiz Bang Bang. Um, and uh, that was last year, and it helped raise a lot of money, which was great. The article was titled, One Mega Trivia Episode for Black Lives Matter. Podcasters around Chicagoland lend their skills to raise money. And we were just so excited to be in the article, to be involved, to help out with uh, all the fun fundraising and everything. But uh, we're, we're super happy to have the writer of that article here uh, from the Chicago Tribune and also a Chicago native, and that is Darcel Rocket. How are you, Darcel? I'm well, I'm well. Nice to be included. Uh, you know, obviously I'm a big trivia fan, but um, I should be a more of a podcast fan. But again, you guys are bringing me in. So I'm all about it. So um, but you want to know a little bit more about me? I am a, a writer. I've been a writer pretty much my entire life. Um, Chicago Tribune is paying the bills these days. And uh, I like to do a little bit of everything. 
Um, that includes uh, writing for entertainment, real estate, lifestyles, uh, breaking news, anything really that um, kind of piques my interest. I'm all about it. So uh, that's how I came into the triviality universe. So here I am, and please be kind and gentle. <laughs> and uh, I will try to uh, not shame my alma maters and in, uh, the information that I actually, you know, give out. So we'll see what happens. Now, are well, your the, alma mater? The, Sorry, go ahead. Ken. The ball is in uh, Jody's court as to whether it will be kind and gentle. <laughs> that's true. Not. She so. said it's going to be well-rounded. We and... have we have nothing to do with this. That's true. <laughs> okay. We... Yeah, don't blame us. All Jody. All Jody. Don't blame me. Yes, in the news article, it's all Jody. Don't put that juju on me. <laughs> um, so you, you spoke of your alma maters. Is that the University of Chicago and Columbia behind you there? Yes. So undergrad, you know, uh, you know, grad school. So, yeah, nice, nice, you know, range of uh, – I feel like you, everybody needs to live in New York City for a little bit, um, you know, just to see the madness and the greatness of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been like a, you know, a rolling stone, like everywhere I could like, I haven't lived here, you know, let me find a job. That's where I go. So I've been all across the country, been to London for a while. Oh, um, Neil so, pretends yeah. that he's been to New York and London. Oh, I, I, do. <laughs> I have, I have lived in London. I've been in New York quite a bit. So I, I am right there with you. Um, I don't have the accomplishments of those banners though, with those great schools. Yeah, I'm but... sorry. You had to go to such <laughs> schools. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't get into a good one, huh? Yeah, right. So. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we do what we can. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us. I know this is going to be your first time on the show, and we just appreciate you uh, coming and joining our family of, of Trivia Fun. But uh, you're going to partner with Jeff today. So any particular team name for you both? Do, do those schools have mascots? Well, I think this one's a lion, right? And then this is a maroon. So you got a bird or you got a lion. A maroon? Oh, I thought you meant like the color. <laughs> well, that's Stanford. It's there. both a how color about, and How about bird. the maroon lions? It's very bizarre. Oh, there you go. That's something. Maroon lions. And Ken, you and I will partner today. Uh, so if they're the maroon lions, what would be like the, the more boring? The chartreuse. The beige. House cats? <laughs> the chartreuse house cat. Okay. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. yeah, yeah Matt, you're going to have to remember story. those. Put Matt to work today. Mm -hmm. Maroon Lions and Chartreuse House Cats. All right, let's throw it over to Darren, get the rules. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager zero to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. Cream of the crop. All right. Thank you to Darren for that wonderful rules read. Um, Jody, it's uh, your show now. Feel free to take it away. Oh, no pressure. <laughs> All right. Uh, so round one, question one. I truthfully wrote this question um, before Meatloaf's passing, but it's going to be a in memoriam because, sorry, he passed away after I wrote the question. Um, all right, round one, question one. It's the end of the world as we know it. More famously known for blockbuster action movies, this director and producer also directed the music video for Meatloaf's I Would Do Anything for Love, But I Won't Do That. I wrote down two names, Ken. Yeah, I like the first one due to the category name. Yeah, and he directed commercials and whatnot, so I'm assuming he was in that world. Mm -hmm. So let's lock in with that answer. I'm trying to think, Jeff. I want to say it's the guy who did, um, what's the one with the the film with the Bruce Willis meteor thing? Oh, Armageddon. Yeah, Armageddon. Who is was that, the director? Is of that, that one? a Michael Bay film? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I, I would believe that. I mean, he'll okay. do he'll do anything. Yeah, I think so. Right? It's all that. Yeah. <laughs> That's all Maybe I can think of. But the thing he likes to do the most is put the camera and swivel it around. <laughs> right. The and as long as someone said. It's got real. Yeah. That's all you need to do. <laughs> all right. So Michael Bay? I, I like Michael Bay as an answer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We uh, we agree. Uh, I remember Michael Bay's, one of his most famous commercials is that Hamilton commercial with Got Milk, if you remember. Um, he directed that. But I know, I know he was a music video director, so we also said Michael Bay. Yeah. So the correct answer is Michael Bay. Um, mm. I had no idea he directed music videos. I definitely didn't know he directed that Got Milk ad mm -hmm. that you just mentioned. Aaron Burr. Um, yeah. Yeah. If you watch the video and you know it's Michael Bay, it makes perfect sense because it's just completely over the top. 
I, spent, I, I just spent learned eighteen that, million dollars on pyrotechnics. Yeah, right. <laughs> I just learned that uh, the music video for "She's Like the Wind" that Patrick Swayze did, David Fincher directed. Wow. What? Yeah, really? isn't that nuts? What? Yeah. How crazy That's is that? Being a meatloaf. All right. All right. Good job. Starting off with everyone getting it right, so that's good. All right. Uh, question two. It was always burning. In the early 20th century, when theaters and circuses had a house band, this song by John Philip Sousa, known as the Disaster March, was played to subtly notify staff of an emergency without alerting the crowd and causing a panic. All right. I see you wrote down one Sousa March, and we can't. We don't really know the names of a lot. Right? I don't either. I know. I know the songs. I don't know the names. All right. That's fine. Yeah, was we'll locking. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's the problem for me too, because the there's one that I'm thinking of, and it's how I always keep like actual time in my head, because it most Susan marches are 120 beats a minute, but I can't, I can't remember. But I can't remember that. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we'll say I don't know. He did like so we'll just say. Um, the military Wait, march or something. I don't know. March of the Penguins. didn't do like the Lone Ranger or anything, did he? No, like, I think that Lone was Ranger after march? his time. All right, okay, so the it. military march? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we just said the Star Spangled March, but Ooh, we don't think that's right. He did have a Star Spangled one. Uh, it's, there's stars. The answer is Stars and Stripes Forever. Oh, that's right. Oh. Uh, and that is the one Which that goes... Which you definitely Right. I think so, yeah. Okay. I actually uh, learned about that on Stuff You Missed in History Class, another cool. great podcast. All right, lock it down. A doubly landlocked country is a country surrounded entirely by other landlocked countries. There's only two of them in the world. Name one. <sighs> Talk about stuff I always forget. Um, Darcel, um, I got this one if you want to trust me. Yeah, I'm sure. good with Absolutely. landlocked countries. So you wrote down Vatican. That's one of those um, one of those that's surrounded completely. Mm -hmm. So those I kind of remember. I remember once Lesotho and Vatican. Yeah, whatever. I can't remember the double landlocked ones. So you want to just say Luxembourg? No, that's not right. Let's say Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan? Okay, that's, that's fine right with either, me. But I think you're close. My guess was Uzbekistan. Uh, yep. So it is Uzbekistan, and the other is Liechtenstein. Mm. Um, Uzbekistan. Kazakhstan is one of the I... ones around Uzbekistan. But so. it touches the Caspian. So you chose well, Darcel. Wow. I knew he was going to so know much. that much. <laughs> I, should, I should write all this stuff down and quiz my colleagues later. All right. So we are on question four. All right, this is a bit of a long one, so I'll definitely repeat it if we need to. Uh, she's a runner. She's a track star. In 1967, Catherine Switzer was the first woman to run this race as an officially registered competitor. At the time, the rules didn't explicitly bar women from competing, but that didn't stop race manager Jock Semple from chasing her down and attempting to tear off her racing bib. What race was this? I think we remember this one, right? I remember learning this fact uh, when we may or may not have been in the area. So, yes, we're going to lock in. Um, I'm at a complete loss, even though the Olympics is like one week away. Okay. Um, I think she was a marathon runner. If I remember the story about her right, she she like did everything she could to compete and put up like a, a stellar time, even like sneaking into the race, like so that she could, you know, kind of get in there. And uh pretty sure that was at the Boston Marathon. But yeah, if I remember, I think that's the one. But yeah, total badass. Okay. I'll stick with that. And we said Boston Marathon. That is correct, is the Boston Marathon. Um, there's a little nuance to it. Women did run in the marathon previous to that. They weren't registered. So while they were allowed to run along the route, their times didn't count. They weren't recorded. They basically were just along for the ride. Um, Catherine registered under KV Switzer, um, and they just accepted it. And so she was the first registered participant. She was actually an hour and 10 minutes, I believe, behind the fastest woman who just wasn't registered because she wasn't allowed at that point. Oh, wow. Um, and I think it was not until 1974, I believe, that women were officially allowed to register and run in the race. Question five. All right. Check out the big brain on Brett. Weighing more than 20 pounds, the brain of what mammal is the largest of any animal species? Well, wouldn't that just be Jeff? Wouldn't that just be the elephant? I was trying to think if it was something like that or maybe something... I don't know if any whales have large brains. I know I know some of them have smaller ones than you'd think for their body size, but I I'm I'm comfortable doing that actually. I, I like that answer. Okay. 
So we can lock well, that. Are right, you locking an elephant? Yeah, well, I think we're gonna lock an elephant actually. All right, I am thinking whale family. Yeah, um, I know that. I, I just saw something, but it, I don't think it's re uh, relevant. It was that the dolphin brain is bigger than the human brain, but I don't think it's twenty pounds. I'm, I mean, I'm not expecting that. Proportionally, the blue whale brain is like bigger mm -hmm. than like the human brain. However, I bet you just because it's so big, right? So I would just say the blue whale. Okay, that's fine with me. And uh, you guys going with elephant, right? Yeah. All right, so no points in this one. Um, the answer is actually the sperm whale. So uh. close, but different whale. I was actually surprised too with the blue whale being the largest. I thought it would be that one, but apparently. So the not. sperm whale does have the. They're front loaded a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, big giant, big <laughs> giant big noggin. Old heads, yeah. Big old brain. <laughs> They're the trivia so they're doing fans. Doing a lot of whale autopsies. I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> just like boom, there's 20 pounds. That's it's a lot of brain for one animal. All right. All right. After five questions, it looks like the maroon lions are using their big brains a little bit more than the chartreuse house cats. Uh, with a 30 to 20 lead after five questions. Ready? Everybody's mm -hmm. good. Everybody's yeah. coffeeed up. Yep. All, yep. Right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, question six: Who's that girl? Uh, credit to my friend Jen for this question. She suggested it, and it was a great question, so I decided to use it. This former child star first gave us the creeps in Return to Oz before continuing her reign in the 90s and early 2000s as the go-to goth girl in movies like The Craft and The Waterboy. We can lock in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I know this, Jeff. Okay. It, for, for, for Ruza Balk, um, I think that's how you say her name. So I, I'm I'm willing to trust you, Darcel. I, I uh I'm not gonna come up with anything better. Yeah, she's a unique kind of uh actress, so okay. I think I'll stick that with yeah, stick with that one. Cool. Yeah, I remember watching her in the craft on VHS in uh middle school. Do you have uh, feelings? <laughs> I didn't have feelings, no. I uh I did think she was great in the water boy though, uh, going up against Kathy Bates. But yeah, we said Feruza Balk as well. Uh, yep, yeah, that is Feruza Balk. Um, she was always one of my favorites. She is absolutely horrifying in American History X. She is very oh, yeah, scary. I forgot she was in, in that. that. <laughs> I forgot about um, that too. Yeah, not, she's still working up there. Nice. <laughs> no. Yeah. All right. So, question seven. Now you know. Which song on Alanis Morissette's landmark album, Jagged Little Pill, actually contains the lyric, Jagged Little Pill? Wouldn't it just be, is it something so simple as is literally Jagged Little Pill or no? I don't remember. I know there's a couple really famous songs on this album. Um, Ironic is on there. You Ought to Know is on there. Um, my, I was leaning towards You Ought to Know for some reason. I want to say the same thing, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to go with that, I, I think we should say You Ought to Know. Yeah. I think you once told me the answer to this question in the theater, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, no, Dave Coulier jokes. Cut it out. Uh, what's the one that goes, you live, you learn. Do, do. Oh, uh, I can't remember the title. You live, you learn. Is it just you live, you learn? Okay. I live, laugh, love. <laughs> yeah. We'll go with that one. So you're saying you live, you learn? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, close enough. The answer is you learn. Uh, that's the name oh, of the song. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I forgot I've about listened that to one. this album so much in college that I, I think it was in the back of the, my mind somewhere. Well, mm -hmm. there was like four like hit singles off that album. It was huge. And it's a mm -hmm. good musical as well. Yeah. Uh, all right. Question eight, Stairway to Heaven. Played by two different actors and often seen holding a basketball, what was the name of Richie Cunningham's older brother who went upstairs at the end of season two of Happy Days and was never seen or heard from again? <laughs> <laughs> Him that and one. him and uh, cousin yeah. Oliver hanging out, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, I have no idea. Judy from Family Judy, Family. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's, her, what's that show? Family Matters. Yeah, Michael Cunningham. Uh, honestly, it could be any regular dude name. Randall Cunningham. <laughs> Randall Cunningham. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I have nothing. Uh, let's just let's just go with Michael. Michael, it is. So according to your clue, when you said. No playing Stairway to Heaven. At first, I thought I was thinking of Wayne's World. I was like, there's no way Dana Carvey played his older brother on Happy Days. But I was like, maybe that's the answer. But if we need the character name, then I think it's either going to be Jimmy for Jimmy Page or Robert for Robert Plant. Richie, Jimmy, both have an I at the end. So I'm going to say it's Jimmy Cunningham. I feel bad because I feel like I led you wrong with my title. Um, so the answer is Charles or Chuck Cunningham. Oh, 
crap, I saw I said that ahead of my mind. Why didn't I say it? Because <laughs> oh, um, he went upstairs and he never came back down again. So he stared way to heaven. Charles. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> no, you were right. It's a generic white man name. You're absolutely correct. <laughs> All right. Uh, question nine. Lost treasure. Thought to be the most valuable stolen object in the world, this painting by Vermeer was cut from its frame and taken from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in March of 1990. All right. Well, we got a Vermeer, so let's just say it. <laughs> okay. We're locked in. At this point, Jeff, any Vermeer, I, anywhere. I think girl <laughs> with the pearl earring is a Vermeer. So... That's what I want to go with, but I'm so bad at this one. I always goof it up, so uh, that's what we'll guess. Fingers crossed. Okay. All right, fingers crossed. We said we, we thought it could be the girl with the uh, pearl earring, but we just don't think that was ever stolen. Ken wrote, uh, what was the one you wrote? There's one that I remember was like really expensive, like uh, Christ of the World. Mm -hmm. Oh, Redeemer Salvador Mundi? Yeah, Salvador Mundi. Um, but uh, for some reason, I remember hearing a lot of stories about the Night Watchman, and I don't know if I'm just correlating it because I think it has like – a policeman in there. they could have used a night watch. Exactly. <laughs> but I, maybe it's ironic, and, and thieves sometimes can be ironic. That's uh, why that was part of the lyrics mm. of ironic. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's why, yeah, Alanis Morissette, huge Vermeer fan. So we went the night watchman. Uh, no points in this one. Uh, the name of the painting is The Concert. Um, one of the reasons it's so valuable is because I think there's like five figures in the painting where Vermeer usually only has one or two. Um, and this painting, along with all of the others that were stolen, were never recovered, so it's still missing. Oh, wow. How, say. how crazy would it be if we're just sitting here and we happen to look behind Jody as she's reading the questions and it's like right there? <laughs> I do live in the, I have, I've been to the museum. I've seen the, uh, the empty frames where the, the paintings were. Um, the museum can't be changed after uh, Isabella's will was that it has to stay the same. So when the paintings were stolen, they just left the frames up. So you can go up and you can see the frame with the painting like actually cut out of it. Oh, wow. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, question 10. Last question in the round. Uh, Jack of all trades. Known for works like The Weary Blues and his novel Not Without Laughter, this leader of the Harlem Renaissance was a pioneer of jazz poetry, wrote a weekly column for the Chicago Defender, and was a founder of the magazine Fire. I think that's right. Okay. We'll lock in. Yes. Uh I don't know. I mean, I know some of his other accomplishments, but the first one, the one that comes to mind, I don't want to put thoughts in your head, but Langston Hughes. I don't know if that's a possibility here. I was about to say, but James Baldwin, but I don't think he ever wrote like in, in, in like newspapers and things. Oh, like okay. That. Yeah. Um, and poetry, though. Okay. All right. Let's just stick with it. <laughs> Sounds good. You see, this is I'm going in these cycles, and I'm like, I should know this, but okay. Go ahead. So, you guys are going with Langston Hughes. And uh, we said the same. I think he's a Columbia graduate, too, by the way. A little connection today. See? Uh, yep, correct answer is Langston Hughes. Um, he was from what I could see basically all of the Midwest. He moved a million times, so it, it didn't really seem like he had too much of a, a home base. Um, but he did end up in Chicago at one point. Uh, but he's just one of my favorites. Really like him. Great, great guy. All right. Well, after an exciting first round, we are right back where we started. It is 50 for the Maroon Lions versus 50 for the Chartreuse Housecats. Uh, before we get on to the swing round today, uh, Jody is a Patreon member. We appreciate her so much. Uh, one of the perks, obviously, she got to be on the show. What are some of the other perks you get, Neil? Uh, well, first and foremost, you get a ton of extra audio content. Uh, we're doing two bonuses a month. You get one that's uh, more trivia focused, which is uh, about 15 to 20 questions where we kind of play as a team to recreate that pub trivia experience since we don't really get to go to trivia anymore. And the other one is a crop drop, which is an ask me anything style uh, bonus where you can just ask us the most embarrassing questions and we will answer them because we are legally obligated to. Uh, that is how it works. You give us money. We answer your dumb questions and we love it so much. <laughs> Uh, but on top of that, there's posters, uh, stickers, uh, gift boxes, all that good stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can join for as little as $1 a month. I almost said a day like I was used to, but I <laughs> caught myself. Yep, just feed a podcaster, $1 a day. Uh, so, again, just check, this out, check us out at patreon.com slash triviality to sign up today. All right, after that, we're going to send it back to Jody for today's swing round. What do you have for us today? All right, so I'm going to give a list of 15 names, and for five points apiece, we just need to know if it is the name of a drag queen, a nail polish color, or a Kentucky Derby winner. Okay, so 15. 
Yes, 15 questions or 15 right. names rather. Um, a lot and of I'm points up for grabs. Good. Yeah. And I'm looking for the name of the horse in the Kentucky Derby, by the way, not the, the jockey or anything like that. The actual horse. Okay. All right. So number one, we have Unicorn Puke. Number two, Cake Hole. <laughs> number three, Thunder Gulch. Number four, Milk. Number five, Black Onyx. Number six, Mimi, I'm first. Number seven, Pink Star. Number eight, Scallywag. Number nine, Violet Tchotchke. Number 10, California Chrome. Number 11, Amazon Amazoff. Number 12, Silver Charm. Number 13, Coco Montrese. 14, Foolish Pleasure. And 15, Head of Lettuce. All right, we'll think these over and be right back. We took it all. We brought them to our land. An endless night. Ember hot and icy cold. The rage of the earth. We made this curse. Carved it in the blood on our backs. We did not see. We could not, but she did. And in the end, what will I become? Senwa Saga. Hellblade 2. Play it now with Game Pass. Sergeant and Mr. Smith, you're gonna love this house. Bunk beds in a closet? There's no field manual for finding the right home. But when you do, USAA Homeowners Insurance can help protect it the right way. Restrictions apply. Have you been wondering where's the beef? Well, on our podcast, Throwback Trivia Takedown, you might just find that out, as well as some other things about the 70s, 80s, and 90s. We're a nostalgic-based trivia show that pits two challengers head-to-head in a duel of the decades, with categories ranging from movies, TV and music, to slang, food, and fashion. You're sure to get the best in retro-themed trivia. So strap on your jelly shoes, grab a surge, and walk like an Egyptian to your favorite podcast app and check out Throwback Trivia Takedown. I heard even Mikey likes it. All right, and we are back. Uh, Quick deliberation, because we kind of had to go off the gut with these, but let's see how we did. Five points apiece, 15 questions, lots of points at stake. All right, so number one, we have Unicorn Puke. Uh, For this one, we said that was nail polish. We agree. We said nail polish. Correct. It is nail polish. It is by Colt Nail Polish. Uh, number two, we have Cake Hole. That seems like a horsey. We said Drag Queen. Oh, no points on this one. That is also a nail polish. Uh, and it's by Butter London. Right. Uh, number three, this is my personal favorite out of the entire list, Thunder Gulch. Uh, also horsey. We said horse. Yep, that is a horse. That is the 1995 Derby winner. Uh, let's see. Number four, Milk. M-I-L-K. So that's nail polish? As did we. That is a drag queen. Oh, uh, milk is you. very pale and goes by milk. Uh, number five, black onyx. This one we said drag queen. We agree. This is a nail polish. Uh, this is OPI is one coat black. <gasps> I should have known that. Simple, simple as that. <laughs> I've seen that in the store. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number six, Mimi, I'm first. We said horsey. We said horse, too. This is a drag queen. Uh, Mimi was eliminated from RuPaul's Drag Race after picking up and spinning around another contestant during the final lip sync. I can't do that. Mm-mm. No, no, or, not allowed to pick Were they up. eliminated first? Hence the name. Uh, <laughs> very close to it. If it wasn't first, it was very early on. You can't do that in racing, either. They would also no. be disqualified. <laughs> yeah, you can't pick up the horse and pick around with it. Uh, let's see. Number seven, Pink Star. So that's a drag queen. Wow, this is very uh, familiar sounding. We said drag queen. That is the 1907 Kentucky Derby winner. <laughs> this has gone downhill. <laughs> what is going on? I do kind of like how wrong we are, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of reassuring. Yeah. <sighs> you have a, there's a one in three chance for each one. Mm-hmm. So this is, we're beating the odds here. All right. Uh, number eight, Scallywag. Nail polish. Ooh, we said horse. That is a nail polish. Uh, that is also by Butter London. It's a very nice bluish green. 
Uh, all right, number nine. I think this one was deliberated a little bit here. Violet Chachki. It's the only one I knew, and I believe it's a oh. drag queen. So that means it's not a nail polish. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like Neil on my paper. I wrote queen, and you crossed it out and wrote drag. <laughs> I didn't. I, I thought you wrote horse. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Um, that is a drag queen, Violet Chachi. She is absolutely stunning. Uh, number ten, California Chrome. Uh, that's definitely a horse. Yeah, we knew this one was a Derby winner. Yep, that is the 2014. That one was fairly recent. Uh, number 11, another one of my favorites, Amazon, Amazoff. You said that's got to be a queen. Yeah, we said drag queen. That is a nail polish, also <laughs> by OPI. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, number 12, Silver Charm. So that's a uh, nail polish. Yeah, we said nail polish. That is a 1997 Kentucky Derby winner. Coco Montrese. So that's a drag queen. Yeah, pretty sure this is a drag queen. That is a drag queen, famously known for being too orange. All right. Uh, number 14, Foolish Pleasure. So that's a horse. Uh, we too said horse. Yeah, 1975 Derby winner. Right. And last but not least is Head of Lettuce. We said that's nail polish. And we agree. That is a drag queen. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. How do you introduce yourself as head of lettuce? Uh, I will say it is spelled Hedda, H-E-D-D-A. Oh, and Hedda Hopper? Wait. Okay. I don't know. She is a pretty old school queen. She's been around for a while, so maybe she's one of the older ones. But yep, Hedda Lettuce is a drag queen. All right. Well, with seven correct on our side, we did beat the odds. And us, because we got five correct. So we were actually right on par. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so after that swing round, we get a little bit of separation. The house cat's up 85 to the lion 75. All right. So round two, question one. If you're not first, you're last. Chicago is known as the second city, but what is the second largest city in Illinois? For a bonus five points, what is the second largest city in my home state of Massachusetts? I know, I know the second largest city in Illinois. Is it by area? I, I believe it was population. both population and area, actually. I, I think I checked and it was both. Is it, Jeff, do you think it's, um, God, what's big? Is it Peoria? No. For me, it's a coin flip. I don't know if it's Rockford or uh, Aurora now. I mean, that, that area is getting pretty big. Um, I'll leave that to you, Jeff. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know a couple other cities, but they're pretty small. I mean, Salem's not very big. Foxborough is where they play the footballs, and um... <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I got nothing. So whatever you throw out there, I'll okay. I'll, I'll close um, on. We'll, we're gonna go with uh, Aurora and uh, Foxborough, Massachusetts, just for no reason. All right, I'm pretty confident in Aurora. And what do we think for Mass? I thought maybe it was kind of a trick question, and I know there's a lot of students in Cambridge, so we said Cambridge. Mm. Right, uh, so I did just double check. Um, Aurora is correct by both land size and population, so it's the second largest city in Chicago. Um, second largest city in Massachusetts is Worcester. Worcester. Mm. Ah, Worcester. I thought uh, that yeah. was part of Boston. Like the Boston yeah. area? Like a suburb oh, or something? No. Worcester is about Worcester is like an hour and a half outside Boston. Hour, it's oh, okay. uh, like right in the middle. Uh, Worcester is home of H. John Benjamin and the Smiley Face. Oh my God! That's pretty, pretty much all we got. Oh my God! Oh my I God. once went Land to a Smash Brothers fly. tournament in Worcester, Massachusetts. Did you really? Yeah. Brand how, did you, how did you do? Uh, I did not do well. No. <laughs> <laughs> Waste of time. Flew all the way out there just for that. That's oh. not true. All right. Um. Let's see. Question two, round two. Let's talk about Gabriel. Disney's newest hit, Encanto, takes place in Colombia and has themes of magical realism, a literary genre in which fantastical elements exist in ordinary settings. The most famous example of magical realism is this novel by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Elected. Oh, good. Okay. Because I, I just researched this like a couple weeks ago and I completely forgot about it. I thought it. that was by J.K. Rowling. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I think of... Gabriel Garcia Marquez novels, the first one that comes to mind is... Um, the first and only one that comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's be real. A <laughs> uh, Hundred Years of Solitude, um, which won the um, Nobel Prize in Literature, um, which I read, and it was the hardest book I've ever read. Um, not you've, because it's You've not, said that about a few You said books. that about Good Night Moon, though. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this is true. Um, but no, I uh, uh, that one just uh, catches me up because the characters. But um, really, really good book. And like I said, uh, probably for sure his most famous novel. Um, the other one, um, Smart Alex, who don't think I know a second one, would be Love in the Time of Cholera. But um, yeah, I'm, I want to go with uh, 100 Years of Solitude, if that's okay. Okay. For the record, when she said in Canto, I haven't seen it, but my niece has seen it, and all she kept talking about was that song called Bruno. And I was like, it's gonna be Bruno, and it was not. Mm. And I, I was I was <laughs> glad so. it wasn't in a Canto question because it's been in my queue for a while, and I'm I haven't gotten to it yet. And uh, I am now a substitute teacher, and that book is laying around one of the classrooms I was subbing in. So luckily, I knew it was Hundred Years of Solitude. Uh, yep, One Hundred Years of Solitude is correct. Uh, and Canto is great. You guys should absolutely watch it mm-hmm. if you haven't. Um, it very much has that that vibe of ordinary setting with crazy magical things happening and everyone just accepts it it's just totally normal in this world so it's great kind of like our podcast mm-hmm. <laughs> i was 50 50 if it was going to be an isabella and a question yeah <laughs> all right uh question three see you later alligator this 1999 action comedy monster movie stars bridget fonda bill pullman brendan gleason and oliver platt and featured betty white as the foul-mouthed dolores bickerman whose out-of-control pet was terrorizing a small town in Maine. Great movie. We're locked in. Oh, Great um. movie. Brave review, says Neil Fisher. <laughs> Neil's 23-year removed review. Um, so, Jeff, it was, um, again, it's the it's in the big alligator, um, you know, that uh, Betty White feeds, and it grows to be giganto, you know, basically in this, and it just okay. keeps eating people. But I, I, for the life of me, I can't remember the name of the film. Is it just some? Is it? It's not just called Gator or something. It's not like it could be. I mean, that sounds hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I would. You know what? Or, you sold like, me just it's, on it's that. It's not either Gator or Croc. I don't know. Like you were, you were again, saying alligator just, earlier, it, so it could be a Gator. But. Okay. Then yeah, let's. It's yeah. It's in that. Okay, in that space. Yeah. I'm doing Ultraman now. Okay, so let's do the Gator. <laughs> Perfect. We're gonna we're gonna say Gator. What's great about this movie is that the plot line is about a giant alligator eating the members of the 1980 United States hockey team. Um, so we said Lake Placid. <laughs> ah, yeah. It is Lake Placid. Yep, that's <laughs> correct. Um, I watched it recently, and I just the cast is so stacked, and I didn't realize as a kid how many amazing actors are in that movie. But yeah, Betty White is feeding uh, whole cows to the the crocodile by the end of the movie, and she's very upset when they come to try to take her her pet away. So had to nobody, include a Betty. Nobody question. messes with Betty White. Yeah, it's like the remember, it's a, a great movie in that section of like employee picks. You get you know Lake Placid, and then you get Anaconda, Dante's Peak, Congo, Volcano, Congo. It's just great. <laughs> All right, uh, obligatory sports question. On November 1st, 1946, this team defeated the Toronto Huskies 68 to 66 to become the first team to win an NBA game. Any fan taller than Toronto center George Nostrand was allowed into the game for free. I remember this story. Let's just pick an early basketball team. I mean, you're assuming that they're still like around after 1946, right? So yeah. I was thinking this is going to be like a big name team, like the Knicks or someone we've heard of. Oh, I don't know. Can we Harlem Globetrotters? Uh-huh. Were they a Were they an NBA team? I pro- probably not, but okay. They're He's just spinning cool. it on his finger. Just take it. From I'm, him. You know what? I, we're not. We got like a one in thirty chance, anyways. So we can say Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> All right, we picked the old timiest sounding team name, the Knickerbockers. Mm. Uh, that is correct. The New York Knicks. Oh is the no! Answer. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I did purposely make a question with a team that was still around, so it wasn't some obscure team that doesn't exist anymore, like the Toronto Huskies. All right. Okay. Uh, question five. Come on. Debuting in 1972 and featuring content created almost entirely by children, this educational TV show encouraged kids to write to P.O. Box 350, Boston, Mass, 02134. You speak Ubby Dubby? I do speak Ubby Dubby. Uh, Zoom. How about Dubby What by Um Are you The Sims? What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, was Zoom a big part of your... Uh... Not really. I, like, I'm, I'm aware, like, consciously yeah. in the back of my head, but, like... That is one thing I did not watch. No, I was I was a PBS kid. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, yeah, so I think it's Zoom. 
Okay, I'll stick with that. All right. You don't think it's the conjunction junction, whatever? No. Mm, I okay. know my function, Neil. <laughs> All right. I'll trust you, Jet. Just confidently shut down that uh, that alternative. Uh, so you guys are going with Zoom? Zoom. Yep, the answer is Zoom. After five questions, the chartreuse house cats have their claws out, going five for five in that round, uh, bringing the score up to 134. Uh, the Lions being a little bit lazy over there, uh, only getting three out of five, bringing their score to 105. So 135 to 105, heading into the back half of the second round. You got to save up that energy to pounce, Matt. So. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> All right, question six. You plus me equals us. Developed in the 17th century by Isaac Newton, this branch of mathematics is the study of continuous change. Its name in Latin means small pebble. There is no way that we had a together reference on back-to-back -back episodes of this stupid <laughs> show. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe it. Sometimes the world just <laughs> coalesces in interesting ways. Uh, wow. Um, I... Uh... It's not relativity. I, th I think it's a um, something I was very bad in at school, which was calculus. Oh, okay. Um, well, like all of math for me. So it's just kind of <laughs> like just all. Science, however, I was like, you know, straight A student. Yeah, I was, I was good with that stuff, except for physics, because it relied on calculus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go with calculus? Yes, I, I'm pretty sure Newton was an inventor of that. Um, uh, well, maybe co-inventor, Leibniz may have done it, whatever, but we're going to say uh, calculus. Yep, we said calculus, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is calculus. I'm glad someone else that listens to the show is a Together fan as well. <laughs> Yeah, literally the last episode we recorded. Two had, episodes uh... in a row. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's the new Bowling for Soup. <laughs> Thank God, because we needed a new Bowling yeah, for we Soup. We needed a new one. We needed a new uh, horse to beat today. <laughs> from, now on, from now on, we're instituting a Bowling for Soup fine. <laughs> so if you mention Bowling for Soup and you're not already a $50 patron, you have uh. to. <laughs> it's the troll tone. Or if you're in Bowling for Soup. That, I guess that's okay then. Yeah. Yeah, the only way your fine goes away is if you convince a member from Bowling for Soup to be on the show. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a jinx. Yeah. I keep tagging them on Twitter, so fingers crossed. <laughs> they have to listen eventually, right? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> or block you. <laughs> All right. uh, let's see. Question seven. Someone cue Unchained Melody. After taking up pottery as a hobby, this actor and writer known for his distinctive laugh launched houseplant.com where he sells a $350 ashtray and a five and a half pound lighter, among other things. We're locked in. I love how confident Neil was, as you were saying. <laughs> He's like, oh, nodding yeah, his head. Definitely. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that was like extremely fast, Neil. So that, I don't know, is that great or is that unnerving? He's, he's terrifying. It's okay. <laughs> he's a pottery aficionado. Um, <laughs> Life of lighters, and, lighters and ashtrays. I mean, is it too much to say that this sounds like a Tommy Chong thing? Because I feel like he'd be all oh. in this business. I could see that. Oh, Cheech has a distinctive laugh, too. <laughs> it's the marijuana that gives him the Is this the secret all along? The higher he gets, the I, more I he think, talks about I think uh, Nash kept, Bridges. Yeah, I, would say, I think Cheech kept busy acting, though. I guess Tommy Chong was on that 70s show, but... So you just want to stick with... Uh... Tommy Chong? Okay. I like, I like that, if that's good. Gotcha. Cool. Sounds good. <laughs> Seth Rogen? Oh, no! <laughs> It's still that the marijuana a... that makes the still... That is an interesting Seth Rogen impression. Uh, yes, the answer is Seth Rogen. Um, uh... The pieces are beautiful. I will say they are very interesting. I don't know that I'd pay $350 for a, an ashtray, even if Seth Rogen himself did make it. Um, but credit to my friend Sarah for that question. She is a potter. Shout out to Love and Motion Ceramics. Um, and she apparently he is like a... <laughs> kind of blown up in the pottery scene as like the uh, celebrity like representation of their hobby so yeah. wow yeah. all right question number eight the canyon is a lie despite its name this national park named for the mormon settler who homesteaded the area is not a canyon but a collection of natural amphitheaters the only two national parks i can think of that have canyon in the name are grand canyon which i think was in the question and bryce canyon and that fits to me just because it sounds like it could be named after someone. 
but I don't I don't have anything better on that. Um But yeah, I don't know about Red Rock. I'm not I'm not too familiar with that. I mean, am I like I don't know. I know it's that as soon as you say it, it's it that's it. But um let's just go with uh it's not red is it Red Rocks? Let's just go with Red Rocks. Okay, we'll I go guess. with Red Rock. All right. Well, I was thinking that maybe we wanted to use the word cake in there just because the canyon is a lie and the cake is a lie, but couldn't really work that in. So we're saying Red Rocks because that is a natural amphitheater. Oh, so close. Uh, it was actually said it's Bryce Canyon. Mm. Uh, I was hoping the Mormon would give away that it's in Utah. Um so not the Grand Canyon, but yeah, it is Bryce Canyon. Uh, my partner is named after Bryce Canyon. So oh, cool. hi Bryce, when you listen to this. <laughs> All right, we are on uh, question nine. Murphy in the evening. Who was the first woman to host SNL on November 8th, 1975? She was also the first person to host the show twice when she appeared again on December 20th of the same year. Oh, um, yeah, I, I think that's right. All right, mm-hmm. we're locked in. Um, it wouldn't be, there's no way it would be Gilda, would it? I don't think so. When she said Murphy in the evening, it made me think of Murphy Brown, which I think, I know Candace Bergen hosted a couple times. Yeah, but was she an SNL person? No, I th- she just hosted, like, just, I th- oh, okay. yeah, she was one of, she hosted, like, a couple times. I think she's part of the, like, the Five Timers Club now or something like that, but. Okay, we'll stick with that. Okay, we're gonna. Darcel and I are gonna lock in Candace Bergen. Yep, uh, we were just watching the uh, Seinfeld episode where Kramer works uh, in the office on Murphy Brown, which is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, we also said Candace Bergen. Uh, yep, the answer is Candace Bergen. Uh, Murphy in the morning was the name of her show on Murphy's. Uh, what was the name of the show? Murphy, now? Brown. Murphy, Murphy Brown. Murphy Brown. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Totally blanked. Uh, yep. So she was the first woman to host and the first person to host twice. I didn't look up how many times she hosted total, but I think it was a few more times after that. Yeah, I think oh. she was right around five, if not over that mark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And question number 10, last question in round two. She's simply the best. Speaking of first women, who was the first woman and the first black artist to appear on the cover of Rolling Stone in November of 1967? She appeared on the cover a total of nine times, most recently in 2005. We can lock it over here. Yeah. Well, it has to be Tina Turner, right? I mean, I would. I, that's a great answer. I would think so, yeah. Um, because I can't imagine anybody being that popular. Right. And if it was 1967, I don't think somebody like Janet or anything like that would. Nah, it's got to be Tina. Yeah, if going all the way back to the 60s, Tina Turner sounds like a good answer. So we'll lock that in. Rolling down the stone. Uh, we said Tina Turner. Uh, yeah, that is Tina Turner. Correct. A long career from 1967 to 2005. All right. After two rounds, we have the Chartreuse House Cats with 175, picking up a ton of points in that second round. And then the Maroon House, oh, nope, they're not House Cats, they're Lions. The Maroon Lions are at 135, so it's anybody's game going into the final. Oh, Matt, were you looking at Chartreuse on your phone? I wanted to see what color it was. It's some kind of green. <laughs> green Cats versus Red Cats. Oh, it's a green? I always mistake it for a pink for some reason. It is not. Why. It is a green. So it's Head of Lettuce, is that it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unicorn puke. Mm-hmm. Matt's new uh, drag queen name, Chartreuse Cat. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Chartreuse, Chartreuse or Consequence. All right. Let's see oh, if we God. can get these uh, <laughs> final round categories and not blow it, Neil. All right. Final round. Go, go, Power Rangers. Your categories are red, pink, blue, black, and yellow. And as we place these uh, bets, I'm just thumbing through Neil's book here. Um getting some advice as to how to bet. And I think we know what we're going to do. But actually, um, now that I've completed your book, I don't have hemorrhoids. That's true. I (laughs) didn't before, but I still don't. I'm not sure if it's because of the book or not, but just saying. Well, there is a a, a great ingredient inside all the pages. It's made of uh, smushed Preparation H. Oh, God. All I'm saying is the book is at least equally as medicinal as Himalayan salt lamps. No, that's true, and actually, it's a good segue because the way is that the, what book, the H stands for, <laughs> the way the book is designed, it's called uh, "Being Patrick Swayze: Essential Teachings for the Master of Mullet." Um, it breaks down Patrick Swayze's career into five elements, which I call Fung Swayze, 
Uh, and each element talks about how he was an action star, how he was a romantic lead, his uh, conservation efforts, and a bunch of things like that. And just a little preview here for Matt. Uh, the second element in Appreciating Swayze is called Pure Adrenaline. And the chapters uh, in that section are The Swayze Method, Blood, Sweat, Tears, and Stunts, Sweatin' Like Swayze, The Workout for Ken. Uh, if you want to work out. And then for Matt, the official Roadhouse drinking game, which includes recipes that I myself, who don't mm -hmm. drink, created. So hopefully they are okay. <laughs> Just shots of Malort. There's Malort in there, kind of. Uh, and some gold schnapps. Uh, oh, perfect. And then a uh, Connect the Swayze artwork. So if you want to be an artist, you can connect uh, all of his abs and, and muscles. So, um, there you go. Yeah, and th this episode is going to air right before a promo code is going to end. So if you'd like 30% off, go to trivialitypodcast.com slash Swayze. And um, you can go to the publisher, get 30% off. And I'll sign your book if you want. Just email me at beingpatrickswayze uh, at gmail.com, and I'll send a book. Last book. chance. Last, Last chance. chance, folks. Get the code in. Yep. All right. Our wages are also in. Let's get the questions. All right. So final round, question one, red. A video featuring this song from Taylor Swift's Red Album and a screaming goat went viral in 2013. <laughs> Pink. Launched in 2003 and aimed at younger consumers, Pink is a division of this elusive lingerie brand. Right, blue. The Blue Danube is the second longest river in Europe. Within two, how many countries does the river flow through? Black. Known as Black Tuesday, October 29th of what year saw 16 million shares traded in one day and signaled the beginning of the Great Depression? In yellow. In the 1968 movie Yellow Submarine, the Beatles are recruited by the Lord Mayor of Pepperland to help defeat this group of music-hating jerks. All right, those are the questions. We'll be right back with, hopefully, the correct answers. All right, we are back from our break. Neil's book has cured my sweaty palms. <laughs> That's why his palms don't sweat anymore either. That's right, and it's not surgery. He used to have clammy, uh, clammy palms, mm -hmm. but now he's good. Um, but we have our answers, so let's get the questions one more time. All right, so question one is Red. A video featuring this song from Taylor Swift's Red Album and a screaming goat went viral in 2013. All right, we bet 30 on this one, and we uh, chose the classic uh, We Are Never Getting Back Together, Never Getting Back Together, whatever that one's called, yeah. Um, for 15, um, we said... I knew you were trouble, or rather, I knew you were, insert goat scream here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the correct answer is, I knew you were trouble. Correct. I combined two of her songs into one. <laughs> this is not good, Neil. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Uh, second question. We'll Pink, get it back. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Launched in 2003 and aimed at a younger consumers, Pink is a division of this elusive lingerie brand. Uh, yeah, Ken um, wasn't sure on this one, and I just you know pulled down my pants a little bit, said pink on the back, and I said, hey, it's Victoria's Secret for, for 30, 30 for thirty points. Neil's secret. <laughs> I think the secret's out. Uh, <laughs> Darcel and I, we've got 15 on this one and the rest of them, and uh, we said on Victoria's Secret. Is that right? Yep. All right. That is correct. The answer is Victoria's Secret. All right. Uh, next, we have Blue. The Blue Danube is the second longest river in Europe. Within two, how many countries does the river flow through? Goodness, who knows? Uh, for another 30 points, we said eight. Uh, for 15, uh, we're going to one-up you. We said nine. All right, both teams getting points. The answer is 10. Um, I can live with that. <laughs> both within two. It's all that counts. All right, uh, next, we have Black, known as Black Tuesday, October 29th of what year? Saw 16 million shares traded in one day and signaled the beginning of the Great Depression. Another 30 on the table. We said 1929. Yep. We, we said 29 as well. How many points? 15. That is correct. 1929. The end end of the Roaring Twenties. And last but not least, uh, we have Yellow. In 1968 movie Yellow Submarine, the Beatles are recruited by the Lord Mayor of Pepperland to help defeat this group of music-hating jerks. Yeah, a movie definitely not inspired by psychedelics. Um, <laughs> again, 30 points. Neil had it. And also the name of a ska band. Yeah, that's right. We we went with the Blue Meanies. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is not our answer. <laughs> 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 yeah, we went with something salty or something in the salt realm. Sea water. You well, I figure if the if the mayor's pepper Saltwater. or something, they had to be Himalayan sea salt. Mm. 
the correct answer is blue meanies. I've actually <laughs> never seen the entire movie, but I, I knew that just from like the small clips that I saw. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I'm high enough to watch that. It's also the name of a wrestler. I didn't know that's where it comes from. Oh. So were they like the Smurfs or something? They kind of look like Smurfs. Yeah, they're... <laughs> mean Smurfs? Okay. <laughs> Truthfully, I have not seen the movie okay. sober, so I, I don't remember. <laughs> I have seen it a couple of times. Okay. All right. After the final round, the scores are all in uh, with a very respectable 180 points. The Maroon Lions coming in second today, but they could not top the perf almost perfect round of the final. Betting 30 good wagers there for the Chartreuse House Cats coming up with 265 to be today's cream of the crop. The cream will rise at the top. Oh, yeah. Meow. <laughs> we finally, that's, our, that's our cheer. Our <laughs> cheer. <laughs> Meow. We finally got one. Yeah. It's been a while. So, yeah. It's been, it's been a long time, actually. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, been thank you. Yeah. Great competitors Congrats. and uh, great questions, too. Those were awesome questions. Yeah, thanks, Jody. Yeah, that was, thank you. I'm glad you guys like them. It's very hard to judge when you're writing them how easy or hard they are. Um and especially to get out of your own wheelhouse, because if it was me, these would every single one of them would be like pop culture. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thanks for having me on. This was actually wicked fun. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. And uh, any final thoughts? Uh, I think pretty much everybody's covered the whole like get vaccinated, get boosted thing. Um, I just want to say the the holidays are over. A lot of people give and volunteer and donate during the holidays, and then when the holidays end, that sort of dries up a little bit. Um, so if you can keep giving, keep volunteering, keep helping out. Um, a lot of people need just, you know, a helping hand right now. So try to do what you can do. Yeah. You got to give. Yeah. You got, that's right. <laughs> right and, on. Uh, Darcel, thank you for joining us and being an excellent competitor today. Put out quite a fight. Uh, any final words from you? Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm good. It's been fun, you guys. And, and like I said, making me stretch those muscles that I don't stretch enough, apparently. But I'm um, <laughs> sorry. Like, you know, I, I put bring the, I brought down, you know, Jeff's whole curve here. Oh, so, no, you're good. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I apologize. Uh... You know, I, I had I didn't have a good feeling going into this one. You know, uh, you don't you don't win three in a row very often. Yeah, Jeff used up all his right answers on the last game. That's so. right. Yeah. So so on the, suck it, Jeff. On the heels of this recording, you know, Tom Brady couldn't go three for three. Neither can uh, I. So so where can uh, people find your your writing, Darcel? Oh yeah, uh, do uh, support local journalism, um, ChicagoTribune.com, and uh, just look for Darcel Rocket One L Two T's. And uh, if you get tired of reading my stuff, you can always check out my brother. He's a professional wrestler, Marche Rocket. Um, he's making the rounds, and uh, yeah, we like to keep it interesting in the Rocket household. So uh, didn't even awesome. need to change his name to become a professional. <laughs> yeah, such a, such a solid name. <laughs> he's invited on the show because exactly. we're a big wrestling show as well. So maybe he'll come on and do some wrestling trivia or something. Oh, absolutely! Just let me know when, and we'll hook you up. It'll all good happen. <laughs> That'd be awesome. All right, so that'll do it for today's game. Uh, once again, thanks to our guests, Jody and Darcel. Thanks to Ken, Neil, and Jeff. Uh, this was Triviality. My name is Matt. I did that in the wrong order. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs>Here's the difference. So behind us is a poster of Patrick Swayze. That's that's our brainwaves here. And and behind our cell is a great picture of Amanda Gorman there, a beautiful illustration. So you know who's who's in the right area here. Um, well, thank you. Hey, never put Patrick Swayze in a corner, you know? <laughs> that's yeah. right. Yeah. We, he, he is, is a little too close to the corner over here, to be honest. We, we're really close to putting him at the corner. We are. Yeah.